If this video becomes popular enough, I'd be more than happy to update it and add more features. Hey everyone, I'm QAlbDev, and if you've been following this channel, you already know what's up. In a previous video, I made a 2D simulation where you could build and knock over dominoes. It was small, it was simple, and honestly, it kind of sucked. So as promised, I went back to rework almost everything and made a fully fleshed out update of the domino simulation, which is now called Topplebit. This video is going to be a rundown of some of the new features and improvements. If you plan on using Topplebit yourself, I highly recommend watching to the end because there are some important technical changes that might confuse you if you run into them and are not aware. I'm also going to assume that you've already watched the first domino video and have a general understanding of how the simulation works. If you haven't seen it yet, the link is in the description. But anyway, let's get to it. First up, the changes to the editor. I don't want to spend too much time on this since even though it's a pretty major improvement, it's really not that important or interesting on a fundamental level. Anyway, improving the editor was my number one priority for this update. Originally, you could only build and delete one object at a time, which was very slow and repetitive. So to fix this, I added an area selection, allowing you to copy, paste, and delete a large group of objects all at once. If anyone's ever used Unity's tile map editor, and probably those in a bunch of other game engines too. That's where I took the inspiration for the system. I also added undo and redo buttons so that you can make big changes without the fear of messing something up. And they also make small mistakes less annoying to fix. And finally for the editor, I added hotkeys. You can now access nearly every editor function with a single key press, leading to a much more efficient workflow. All right, with the editor out of the way, let's move on to the fun technical stuff starting with the new component, which I call the click trigger. The name pretty much says it all. It's a trigger that only activates when you click on it. This makes entering inputs faster and also makes it clear where you're supposed to interact with the dominoes. Next, let's talk about the save system. Previously, this was handled by reading and writing save data to your clipboard. It was pretty lightweight, but it also meant that you had to exit the game just to switch between projects, as well as manually create and manage save files on your computer. So I replaced that entire system with an in-game save manager. With it, you can create, delete, and switch between projects, all without ever leaving the game. Everything is automatically saved under one folder within the game's files, using the extension .tbit. Get it? Tbit? Topplebit? Yep, genius. Originally, I was actually going to make the file extension .qob, but my Discord server quickly accused me of excessive watermarking. <laughs> anyway, I also want to mention the changes I made to the save files themselves. Here are two save codes for the same project. One was generated by the old Domino simulation, and the other by Toplebit. See the difference? Well, I hope you do, because it's a huge difference. Old save codes included the entire names of objects, which made them a lot larger than they needed to be. The new save codes, however, replaced these names with unique ID numbers that correspond to the various objects. This makes them significantly smaller, and as a result, quicker to load and easier to share. And don't worry, Topplebit can load both save formats, so you can bring over your project from the old version. By the way, if you were wondering how the save data is encoded, it's actually really simple. A save file is just a long list of numbers separated by commas, and every group of four numbers represents an object. The first value is the object's ID, the next two are its X and Y coordinates respectively, and finally the last value is its rotation. With this knowledge, you could technically skip the editor altogether and just build things by generating their save codes using a script. In fact, this has already been done in the Discord server. I'm still not sure how useful this will prove to me personally, but hey, if you find a use for it, go right ahead. Now let's talk about performance. If you've built something large enough in the old version, you might have noticed that the simulation playback really starts to lag, even if no dominoes are falling. And this is because every object was being updated on every single tick, but only a small fraction of the dominoes are actually changing at any given time, namely the falling dominoes. So this was pointless. I optimized this by keeping a running list of objects that will change on the next tick. That way, only the objects that need an update would be processed. And this led to a massive performance improvement in large builds. Now, I already know what some of you are thinking. 
Wait a minute, didn't I say in the last video that non-falling dominoes don't need to be updated? So why were they? Why didn't I optimize this in the first place? Well, as a matter of fact, I actually did. I initially wrote the unoptimized code as a placeholder, and would later get back to it and write the optimized version. But after I did that, I guess I forgot to remove the old code and hook up the new one. So the optimized code always existed, but there was just no way for it to run. Yeah, that's a major oopsie on my part. Next, I redrew the objects a bit to make them look more stylized and modern. However, I got some feedback requesting to keep the original artwork, as well as suggestions for a few other designs. Because of this, I instead added the ability to load your own custom artwork. So how do you do this? Well, there's a PNG within the game's files that's used to generate the object's textures. You're free to edit this image however you want, and the objects will reflect these changes in-game. You can use this for a lot more than just making the dominoes look pretty. For example, maybe you want to highlight certain dominoes to make outputs easier to see. Or you just want to mess around. Alright, with everything else out of the way, let's get to the most important topic. The changes to domino behavior. And before anyone panics, these are not huge changes. Everything still generally works in the same way. I'm talking about tiny behavioral changes in a few specific edge cases where the outcomes were kind of ambiguous. Take this situation for example. Here, two dominoes are about to fall onto a single domino at the same time. So if I tick the simulation once, which direction will the domino fall in? Up or right? Not very obvious, is it? Given the rules that we currently have, it's impossible to determine how this will play out. It all depends on the order that these dominoes are updated. And this order is handled internally by the game engine, so I don't have any control over this. And yes, as some of you might already be thinking, this does mean that the simulation is in fact not deterministic. I made the mistake of calling it deterministic in the last video, and completely overlooked this issue. Whoops. But that's what these new rules are meant to fix. I came up with them with the help of my Discord server, and they went as far as pulling out physics simulations, and even testing with actual dominoes to find the most realistic behavior. Now let's get back to the previous example. After a lot of testing, we've ruled that orthogonal dominoes should prioritize falling in the direction they're facing over being knocked out from the side. So in this case, the domino will fall to the right because it's facing horizontally. This rule also means that if you want to stop one line with another, you need to make sure that the blocking wave gets to the intersection strictly before the wave it's trying to stop. It won't work if they reach it at the same time. Next, the diagonal domino. When a diagonal domino is knocked over in perpendicular directions, it'll just push the dominoes in both directions. And more interestingly, if two waves collide head-on into a diagonal domino, they'll cancel out and no other dominoes will fall. And finally, the fork domino, which has the simplest rule. In every case of an ambiguity, the fork domino will simply push dominoes in all available directions. And there you go. With these small changes in place, I can now safely say that Topplebit is fully deterministic. So what do you think? Do you agree with these changes? Do you still see any flaws in the system? I'm always looking to improve the game, so please leave a comment letting me know what you think. And if you want to try out Topplebit for yourself, the download link is in the description. The download page also has more detailed explanations of all the features, including a few smaller ones I might not have gone over, so it's probably worth giving that a read. Anyway, now that the game is in a decent, presentable state, it means that we can finally move on to the exciting stuff, such as... Domino computing. Yes, I know this is like the third time I'm saying it, and I hate having to hold it off for so long. But this time I promise, I swear on QOB's little legs, the next Domino video will officially kick off the Domino computing series on this channel, where we'll dive into building logic gates and designing circuits using these falling dominoes. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. If you can't wait, then join us on Discord to share your ideas and see all the amazing things we've been working on. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.